business news from the Capital Region. This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. Thanks for joining us this week for a fresh look at business and finance in the Washington region and how it affects you. Coming up on today's show, advice for small businesses from a big name in Washington. And the annual CEO survey is out. What you need to know about 2015 predictions and trends from 1,400 of the people at the top of the business ladder. But first in today's show, we sit down for a one-on-one -on -one with the man at the top of the company that conducts that survey. PricewaterhouseCoopers is one of the biggest global names in business with its vast network of consultants and experts providing business and financial services in 157 countries. Last year alone, PwC revenues topped $34 billion. That makes it the fifth largest privately owned company in the U.S. Bob Morris is the U.S. chairman of PwC. In this one-on-one, -on -one, we talk to one of the country's biggest business leaders who admits he never set out to be the executive in charge. You've had a fascinating career. Um, but you didn't start at Harvard Business School. You went to SUNY Oswego. Ever regret not having a Harvard degree when you're on not Wall Street? All. Not at all. Look, the, the reality is I think the education system, whether you're at Harvard or a state school, it's all dependent on what you put into it and what you get out of it. And what a university degree does for you is really set the stage for the potential, regardless. And it's what you do then thereafter that matters. I had no aspirations to be the CEO of this organization. I had no aspirations that I actually was going to even stay with that organization. I left that state university saying, I'm doing two years at PwC and I'm getting out. So it really became more around the experiences I got while I was there and then maximizing those to the extent possible. My time in human capital, my time over in Japan, my time in some of the projects that I did that allowed me to see what this organization has to offer and then ultimately get to a position of success. I had great sponsors that helped me along the way. I had great opportunities as a result. And as a result of that, I had a great opportunity to say, how can we actually take it from point A to point B with the various businesses that I have responsibility for? You're so candid about this. You say that not only did you not aspire to the CEO job when you were first there, but you said you didn't stand out at all your right. first few years. What was the turning point where someone first gave you the opportunity or you first seized the opportunity where you first got really engaged? It was probably about three years into the job. Uh, I would tell you the thing that clicked finally was understanding what's my role and how do I fit in the overall strategy? Because those first two years, I was sort of lost. Like I said, I had a mindset of get in and get out. So that was also the commitment piece from my side of the equation. But understanding the strategy and what we do and then having a role to play and then having a few people around me that says, wow, you're adding value and you should feel good about that and you're doing a good job at that, that's what really sprung me to that next level to say I'm now more committed and then ultimately allowed for some success to go forward. How do you do that in a firm that size? It is overwhelming. What is the current size? So we've got about 44,000 people in the U.S. and about 210,000 people around the world. Uh, and in the billions, what's the annual? Uh, so uh, around the world, we're about $34 billion worth of revenue on a total scale basis. It's pretty hard to be one guy coming in uh, at entry level and find your way in an organization that size. Any tips for others on how to do it? So look, I, I would tell you, and this now goes to the next generation millennial, what do they want? They want to be engaged coming in and off of campus. And what does engagement mean? It doesn't mean that you're interacting all the time. It means I get a sense of what the strategy is. I know I have a role to play and I can understand what it is. I feel like I'm contributing and I feel like I'm getting recognized. So what we've done is change the game a little bit. The same strategy that I talk about with our partner, our management group, we actually give it to our staff. And then what we do is actually take to them, what can you do to help actually do the objectives that are needed for the firm and you to be successful? Because we're only as good as all the people within PwC. Our brand is the combination of uh, you know, 210,000 yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, 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 everybody says friends. that. But what is, what is good? Do you like a worker who day one starts speaking up? Or do you like someone who takes a year or two to really learn the job and then starts speaking up? I'd rather have the person speaking up. What, right what away? I, right away. What I would rather have is those people that have an intellectual curiosity to learn more, to challenge the system. That's where the innovation is going to come from. That's where the change is going to come from, from the bottoms up. And if you don't do bottoms up innovation, Kelly, it's not going to come from the top down. And we have the risk 
I think, as a country or a corporation to actually squash innovation. And if you squash innovation from those 22-year-olds, they're not like a baby boomer that's going to stick around. They're going to walk with their feet and go to somewhere else where they actually have the opportunity to succeed. So let me ask you then about your, uh, what you learned as a single working parent. Now you've walked in many women's shoes. Did you feel like you had to take a step back from your career to be able to leave the office at five? Do you feel like you paid a price, or what did um, you learn? I felt guilty and perhaps uh, inwardly focused in doing it, right? So I never told people, first off, I was divorced. So there was a little bit of a, this is my issue, not anybody else's issue. So I was reluctant to talk about it. And I think that is one of the issues with people in general, and particularly women, in terms of how vocal do you be with not only your team and maybe your colleagues and your people that you're friends with, but also your bosses and the like. The thing that we've tried to do differently as a result of that learning is how do you get people to trust one another, open up, and put their issues out there? So just to tell you a quick story, I can think about people who said, I'm going to work all night and I've missed a kid's birthday party. Now, the problem is, did you know that? Did they tell you that? So if you don't have an environment where people can freely say, I've got an issue at home, I need to get out of here, if that environment's not there, they'll be reluctant to share. So I think organizations, as they think about like the lean in exercise, I would argue Cheryl's work on lean in is great from a woman's Cheryl perspective. Cheryl Sandberg, yes. Facebook's uh, lean in, you've been a big proponent of her work. So, but my point is women leaning in is one thing, but if organizations don't lean in to give the support, they're gonna fall over. And one of the things is environmentally, make it safe to say, I've gotta leave at four o'clock and make it acceptable to do that. And make it a team effort to say, I support you in doing that because you're gonna be successful regardless. Let's talk about PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, as we said, such an enormous giant. Um, what's next for the company? How do you go? How do you have growth for? <laughs> well, the good news is we've got a lot of growth. One of the things that's happening is I talked about all those organizations that are struggling with the opportunities and the risks. They need help in doing that. So our growth rates are actually very good. In fact, I would tell you we're trying to get more people into the organization, and we're growing a lot each and every year. We recruit in the U.S., for example, about 14,000 kids off of campus each year. And that's full times and interns. So for us, it's all about how can we get the right skills and remain relevant. So you think about us previously as maybe that audit firm or that tax firm or maybe that firm that counted the Oscars. The reality is we <laughs> brought in the skills. The not a bad part of the job at all. But we broaden the skills to remain relevant. So we're all about how do you actually enhance trust in society? That goes to trust of financial information, but also trust in any information that's between parties. That could be government to people, it could be corporates to media, it could be whatever. And then helping solve big important problems. And those big important problems around education, around healthcare and things like that. So having the right skills to deal with those two big societal needs is what we're all about going forward. On paper, what do you want to see in an applicant? Do you look for someone who competed on a college team so you know they're competitive? Do you want someone who did the best grade wise? Do you want someone who didn't do the best grade wise but took the most diversity of classes? Are you looking for the computer science guy? What do you look for on paper? On paper, what I'm looking for is actually somebody who's operated within a team that actually can one day lead a team, one day be part of a team. I'm looking for on paper that you've tried different things, taken some risks, and you're good enough that you've actually figured out how to navigate those risks and you've been successful on those various things. I can't predict, candidly, for the kid coming in off of campus, your job today versus what it's gonna be three years from now because the world's moving so fast. I need people who can do a lot of different things. Varieties of spice of life. Thanks so much for joining us on Happy Washington Business here. Report. Thanks very much.